Hey everyone, Diavolo here, and in today's video we're going to be power scaling all of the Tokyo Revengers characters in a tier list and ranking them against each other to see who I believe is the strongest and obviously the weakest characters in the story that we've seen so far. So this is obviously going to have spoilers, so for anyone who is an anime only and doesn't want to get spoiled on, you know, new characters that you haven't seen so far in the anime, then do watch out as they are going to be peppered throughout this entire video. But anyway, enough of that. Might as well get into this tier list and start scaling each of these characters. So starting off, we have Mana and Luna, which are obviously Mitsuya's sisters. And I decided to stick them at the front because, really, honestly, we don't know too much about them. And it would be pretty easy to just stick them straight in F and say that they're, you know, fodder, easily defeatable and stuff. But we honestly don't have a clue about them. And it is probably just better to stick them in unknown than stick them in F and probably step on someone's toes. Next up, of course, we have Mitsuya the 4th division captain of the Tokyo Manji gang and obviously being a captain of the Tokyo Manji gang he's extremely strong probably stronger than a majority of the other captains I believe as well he's probably stronger than Parchin and has his own like kind of unique fighting style but then again he's an original founding member so a lot of the founding members obviously quite strong obviously we know he went up against Taiju and was able to actually like withstand a lot of Taiju's punches to the point that uh, him and Taiji were almost having some kind of fair fight in a way. So I think Mitsuya is quite strong. I'd probably put him at like an A level in terms of like all the characters and who else we have coming up throughout the entire story. As I don't believe he is S tier, but he's extremely high in A. Next up, we have Parchin. So obviously Parchin is the captain of the third division of the Tokyo Manchin gang and probably one of the stronger members, obviously, of the entire gang as well. But I'd assume that he's probably not the strongest member out of the five. I kind of point towards the idea that Parchin is probably the weakest out of the five original founding members, which goes against his entire like look that he gives off of being this extremely tough, you know, scary looking person. But obviously under the surface, once you get to know him, he's this really lovely person. So yeah, I honestly think sticking part in like a B tier at the moment wouldn't be too bad. And then if we get through this and a lot of the other characters are kind of like filling up B tier and we might need to stick par down just because he's conflicting with a few of the other people, then we can, but I think B tier for now is a good spot to stick par in. Next, we have the first of the Mizo Middle School 5. So obviously Yamagashi is not strong at all. And in terms of fights, I don't actually think we've seen him really in any fights apart from the one time that him and the boys showed up to stop the Toman guys uh, when Draken and Takamichi were fighting them. So apart from that time, I don't think there is really too much for us to go off on him. He's more knowledge than fighting at all. So I would have to put Yamagashi definitely in like an F tier in terms of strength. Next up we have Takuya or Yamamoto and obviously like literally nothing is really known about his fighting skills in general. And I would assume that he's probably if anything just slightly stronger than Yamagishi as he is one of the guys I think that they protect early on because they're afraid of him getting into a fight as he's not that strong and he'll get hurt. And I'm pretty sure Takamichi ends up stepping in for him in his fight. So I would assume that he's definitely like an F tier, probably even lower than Yamagishi and the idea that he might be extremely like bristle and take a lot of damage and get hurt quite easily. Next up we have the man himself though, Akun, who I think out of the Mizo Middle School 5 is definitely the strongest apart from Takamichi. I wouldn't put him above Parchin by any means, but I definitely wouldn't be sticking him in like F tier like a lot of the other guys here in the Mizo Middle School 5 are. He's obviously someone who gets manipulated a lot throughout the entire story and we don't see a lot of his physical strength and you know like one of the only fights that we do see him fight in again is earlier on in the story where he helps out Takamichi and then later on in the Tenjiku arc he gets you know badly beaten up. So like from memory he's not extremely strong and I kind of wouldn't have him beaten even a lot of like the fodder Tomen members so I probably would stick him at around like a D tier as he's not like strong enough to take out a few Tomen members by himself. I think he'd maybe be able to fight like one or two fodder guys maybe and be able to win but I think in like a one on one with a fodder guy he'd come off on top but apart from that unlike the other two in the Meso 5 so far he is a little bit stronger so we'll put him up in D tier. And then lastly, out of the Mizo 5 that we've got here, we have Masaru, and uh, I honestly, I kind of want to stick him in D as well with a Kun, but you know, like he is a, you know, like as they put it in the story, he's a gopher and he pretty much runs around and pretends to be the strong guy initially when he actually isn't. I'm going to stick him at the top 
of F tier as he's extremely weak and I don't think he'd be able to win against anyone actually by himself in a fight if it isn't for the help of Yamagishi and uh, Yamamoto as well. Next up we have the man himself, Baji Kun. So finally the first guy who I would consider probably like an S tier fighter that we've seen throughout the story. He gets stabbed and then still manages to take out 50 fodder Toman members before making it to Kisaki and finally collapsing. Like by far I honestly think he's probably one of the strongest uh, initial like founding Toman members. I think he's probably as strong as Kazutora if not just slightly weaker. Um, so I would stick Baji though in an S tier because I do believe that Baji is an S tier fighter and he would be able to beat a lot of the other you know like vice captains or executives of those other gangs that we've seen in the past. I think if Baji was still around a lot of these fights that we've seen like say like Payan have they wouldn't exactly happen because you know Baji would step in and just take them out himself. But obviously Baji isn't here right now but I would assume that he's extremely strong being an S tier especially with the feats that we have seen him do in the series so far. But moving on from the man Baji we have Hina and Emma up next and I think it's safe to say that we stick both Hina and Emma kind of in the unknown category just for the idea like unlike Yuzaha we haven't actually seen Hina or Emma really fight we've seen Hema we've seen Hema the the mixture of Emma and Hina we've seen uh, Hina slap Mikey once but that was about it and I don't think we've actually seen her probably fight someone whereas with Emma I don't think we've seen her fight someone at all we might have seen some like kind of flashback with her in the dojo training so she might have some kind of fighting knowledge but from memory uh throughout the series I don't think we have seen her fight so I think it's safe to say that we can stick both Hina and Emma or Hima in unknown next up we have the mysterious Shuji Hanma and this is quite a confusing one. I was, I was finding it really hard initially to think where I was going to stick Hanma because we haven't really seen a lot from him. But what we have seen from him has been like, utterly spectacular. He was able to block two of Mikey's kicks. And then on the third one, finally, when uh, Mikey was enraged because of what had happened to Draken, he took him out with like one final kick. And then later on in the arc, we have Draken go up against him and Draken, you know, ends up winning. So... I'm assuming that he definitely is S tier and in my eyes he's probably just stronger than Baji. So I'll see if him and Baji had a fight I feel like Hama would just come out on top because we know that he has some kind of fighting prowess and he can take blows. He's taken blows from you know two of the strongest people from throughout the entire series so far. So I would say it's a good spot to put him up in S tier there. Next we have Rindo and Ran the Hitani brothers. So obviously Rindo I think is the younger of the two brothers and honestly these guys here are super strong but then again I don't see them being S tier fighters. I feel like Rindo if anything is probably extremely high B tier with Ran being the stronger fighter out of the two as it is said in the uh, Tenjiku arc the younger one Rindo was the weaker fighter whereas the, the older one Ran is the stronger one. So sticking Ran I think in A just below Mitsuya is probably a good spot. Next up we have Osanai. So Osana was obviously the leader of Mobius, which was the first gang that Toman went up against initially. And Osana, I think I'm going to stick him in B tier, just above Parchin, as I don't believe he was a strong fighter at all. He he definitely outclassed Parchin, and I think this is why Pa needs to be down in C tier, as it would make sense to have him kind of breaking that middle ground out from who he couldn't beat to, you know, the people above um, and Toman who could definitely be Osana so it would make sense in my eyes to have uh, Osana in between Parchin and the rest of like Toman above him. Next up we have Chojo who was a fighter from Valhalla from memory and I'm pretty sure these next two fighters are both Valhalla fighters that being Chome and Chojo and I assume that Chome and Chojo we haven't really seen too much from them we did see that they were able to grab Mikey when he was in kind of his like catatonic state and had been hit by that pole in his head so i would assume that they're probably around like a c tier level at the moment just from memory as they didn't really do too much and when mikey snapped out of it and like went into his rage mode he picked both of them up with like one leg and and completely smashed them both so yeah sticking them in c tier kind of below parchin uh because i feel like Parchin would be able to go up against one of them by himself and possibly beat one on one but if he was going up in a like a 2v1 i feel like he would lose in the situation and lastly but not least of the Valhalla captains we have 
Chonbo, who I think was probably the strongest out of the three captains that you know were from Valhalla, not including Baji and the other guys. So I feel like sticking Chonbo in kind of like a B tier would kind of be a fair enough assessment for his strength, as he was stronger than the other two but probably not stronger than the leader of Moebus himself, I would assume. Next up we have, I cannot remember this guy's name off the top of my head right now, but I know he goes up against Payar and uh, right at the start of the Tenjiku arc, mm, right at the start of the fight of the Tenjiku arc and gets absolutely shocked. Oh, that's right, it's Shion Matarame. Shion, yeah, definitely the original leader of Mobius. Uh, I think... Uh, the original leader of the ninth generation black dragons yeah i would, I would assume Sheon definitely he was one of the weaker fighters and i honestly think that Sheon could probably even get beaten by parchin so i'm going to stick him in c tier as well just below par next up we have the first god of the entire scene the man himself shinichiro sano so obviously we have no idea how strong shinichiro sano actually was but if he's anything like mikey and takamichi mixed then we know his fighting skills are absolutely insane along with the fact that he'll never back down but then again i don't actually think he has insane fighting skills i think that he's just a god for the fact that everyone looks up to him in the same kind of way that everyone looks up to takamichi that's not necessarily how i'm going to be ranking takamichi in this list for strength and all that kind of stuff but for shinichiro just because we haven't seen anything from him and because he is this you know like spiritual figure in the uh series so far i'm gonna stick him as the god at the moment next up we have sanzu who's another extremely mysterious character whose face isn't actually even seen until like chapter 206 i believe when he cuts down the fifth division leader so I'm assuming Sansa was like quite strong in terms of like mental fortitude and being able to manipulate people. But in terms of strength though, I'm not actually too sure. I know he is going to be stronger than I would assume probably like Parchin. But in terms of like actually fighting, we've only ever seen him really use like a knife to uh, inflict damage on people. Apart from in the first season when we see him fight for a snippet. But yeah, so that's kind of why I would put him in like a B tier area, but at the bottom of B uh, because he usually uses weapons to gain an upper hand on people. Next up, we have Kazutora, the man himself. And the reason that Mikey almost loses his mind completely, I honestly think Kazutora is super strong. The beatdown that he takes from Mikey is like unrelentless. And the fact that he survives for even that long is just insane so i am going to stick him at the top of s tier for the time being just above hanma as we never got to see those two kind of go up against each other as they were technically allied together so we never really got to see them fight i do believe though in, in a battle hanma and kazutora would be extremely interesting next up we have shifuyu so shifuyu definitely is a strong fighter but i wouldn't consider him like an s tier fighter i'd probably put him in the same tier as a majority of like the other toman captains and vice captains and like a tier as he'd probably be able to beat a majority of the people below him by himself even if they teamed up with someone else possibly but i do believe that shifuyu is an extremely like gifted fighter and would be able to take down a lot of the people below him Finally, the first girl of the entire series that I'm actually going to be able to rank in the tier system. And honestly, I'm going to stick Yuzaha Heart in low B tier. So I reckon she could probably beat the hell out of Shion Matarame and a few of those other guys below her. Along with the Mezo Middle School 5, I definitely could see her defeating and the girls as well. As we've seen her actually kick, you know, other people and she has some kind of like fighting prowess to her. I wish we could have seen more but obviously that's all we're going to get from her so far in the story and I don't think we'll get like anything more from her so yeah I think sticking her in a B tier is pretty good. And now this is the first upset I reckon of the entire night with Kikucho who honestly I consider like another S tier of strength and the strongest one out of the four that I have in there at the moment. This being just for the fact that we really haven't seen his full strength yet and he is absolutely broken what we have seen of him he was able to take down angry when he was in his you know like murderous state so the fact that he was even able to do that is just insane on itself alone i'm really wanting to see more from kakucho in this three deities arc and at the moment it's, it looks like we're building up to see some really really like interesting stuff from him next up we have the crying blue ogre angry so angry is definitely going in s tier though i do believe sticking him below everyone else who is in s tier is 
pretty fair. We do know that he is stronger than Mitsuya and his brother, who I'll grab his brother out now and stick him in A, uh, just below Mitsuya, because I believe that that's probably a fair spot to stick him. We haven't seen too much from Smiley, but we know Smiley is super strong. What we do know for a fact is that Angry, when he is in his blue ogre state, is 100% stronger than both Mitsuya and Smiley, so I could definitely see him being an S tier character and beating a majority of the people below him, but only when he's in that tier. When he's not in that tier, when Angry isn't, and his blue ogre state are probably going to have to stick him around the same spot as parchin in a c tier just because you know like he fluctuates between being this like almost unstoppable beast to uh just being this angry guy who really isn't actually that angry and he's just quite kind and nice next up we have another super super strong character that we've seen a lot of fighting prowess from throughout the entire story so far that being izana kurokawa and honestly, I'm going to stick Izana up in God tier because this man, compared to every single person below him at the moment, he would easily be able to beat them, uh, probably without a sweat a lot of the time as well, as what we've seen from him is just utterly insane. And I think putting him up there as one of the definitive strongest characters in all of Tokyo Avengers would actually make sense. Next up, we have Coco, who's another person who's super mysterious and I want to see more from. And... And I would assume that he's probably on the same level as the majority of like the other Toman guys. And like just kind of around that A tier mark with him being able to beat Shifuyu probably in a fight. And then some other days Shifuyu most likely being able to beat Koko in a fight. Though I don't see his fighting prowess to be, you know, the one thing that he's uh, most valued for, obviously. When it comes to like why he's most valued at the end of the day, it's just because he can make so much damn money. Next up, Koko's best friend in the world, Inupe. So Inupe, I'm going to stick higher than Coco on the list. And this is just because I believe in their fight during the Tenjiku arc, uh, Inupe would have actually ended up beating Coco. And it would just make sense to have Inupe slightly stronger than Coco as they've kind of always been this duo together with Inupe being the strength and Coco kind of being the smarts of their little duo. Now Payan, definitely I would consider probably slightly stronger than Parchin surprisingly and this is just for the fact that he takes out Madarame Shion himself and we actually saw him do it whereas with Parchin we only really ever saw Pa get like kind of beaten up and then knocked over and like kind of knocked out and then have his boy step in for him whereas with Payan we've actually seen him go up against a bunch of different people and win like a lot of his fights so I do believe he's extremely strong and I'd probably stick him around the mark of being able to beat Sanzu in a fist fight. Finally, another division captain of Toman that we've got into here with uh, Mucho. I believe Mucho is probably insanely strong coming from that S62 generation. So I am going to stick him up in the A tier above, like obviously, Coco and Inupe and Shifuyu, who he ends up kidnapping, subsequently, you know, like beating him up. So I would assume that he's obviously stronger than the people he's beaten up in the past or caught in the past. Next up, we have Naoto. So Naoto, we haven't really ever seen any kind of fighting prowess from Naoto. He's never really ever fought anyone. And if anything, I would kind of assume that Naoto is more like F or D tier than anything. But I'm going to stick him in unknown because he is a cop. He probably uses like a gun to fight, if anything, as well. So I am going to stick him in unknown for now. If anyone thinks any differently, though, be sure to chuck a comment down below and let me know. Next up, we have two Toman fodder guys from the fight between Takamichi, Draken, and uh, those Toman fodder dudes who are trying to stop him from getting to the ambulance. And these guys, obviously, I'm going to stick them in D tier just above Akun because I believe, like, by themselves, they would have been able to beat Akun or anyone single handedly. But possibly Akun could maybe beat one of them at the end of the day. I'm not really too sure on that entire, like, aspect of Akun really could 1v1 one of these guys by himself. But I would like to think that he could. Oh, next up we actually have one of the Meso Middle School 5. I thought we'd got through all of them, but one of them has managed to weasel his way into the later group of the entire pack. Obviously, this here is Suzuki, and I'm going to stick Suzuki in D tier as well, actually, because I believe he is stronger than both Masaru and Yamagishi. So I think sticking him in D tier would kind of make sense. Just slightly weaker than Akun, who's kind of the strength leader, I would assume, of their like group of five. Ooh, next up we have Kisaki, and this is probably going to step on a lot of heels here, 
by honestly i don't think kisaki was actually that strong if anything kisaki is like a c tier in terms of strength throughout the story probably not really even being stronger than any of the people that i've actually already got in c tier here and would definitely lose i would say in a hand-to-hand -hand fight with any of them the only reason he comes out on top of it all the time is because of his manipulation of of other people and how he sets certain things up he uses weapons when he can to stab people or hit people over the head with poles or use guns to threaten people so he's just a he's a maniacal character who will use anything to gain an advantage in a fight so in terms of like uh hand-to-hand -hand combat i'm gonna have to stick him in a c but if, if it came down to any weapon obviously this board would be completely different and it's it, it's really hard to kind of scale anyone because on a different day it'd be hard to know who could go up against who and um actually win next up we have Kiyomasa, the cigarette smoking theme but i'm gonna stick this guy in c tier also because honestly i don't believe him to be that strong but I do think that he is stronger than the fighter guys that he, you know, commanded around who were in D tier um, that ran with him at the beginning of the story. So yeah, that would make sense for me that way. Um, apparently next up we have Coco again somehow. So I'm going to stick Coco to the very back of the line or actually we'll just stick him up in, in the same A tier again. I think this is just a two year in the future Coco compared to the slightly younger one. Moving on to another of the vice captains from the Tokyo Manji gang, Hakai. So I'm going to stick Hakai in A tier, just below Ran, because we know that he was lo losing in his fight against Ran until Angry stepped in and was able to take him off him, if I remember correctly. I might be slightly wrong on that idea, but he was losing in his fight against Ran, and I feel like him probably being the bottom of A tier would make sense. Uh, maybe just above Coco, actually, as I think he's probably the only person in A that he could beat. But then again, people below him, I could definitely see him beating a majority of the people below him. And yeah, then again, we have future Inupe who will just stick next to Inupe again. Now we have another S tier strength character being Taiju. Obviously, Taiju is a complete beast when it comes to strength. I don't know if he'd be stronger than Kikucho because at the moment, it's actually so hard to gauge how strong Kikucho actually is with what he's done so far. We've only seen him block really someone and then like throw one kind of punch back. But that was against someone you know like seven years older than him so he's obviously not afraid to fight someone a lot older than him who's probably a lot stronger than him so i think sticking taiju in s tier just below kukucho is probably a good spot to stick him as i don't think even hanma would be able to beat taiju in a one-on-one -on -one fight as taiju was just that strong and mikey kind of just had to show up and take him down at the end of the day the only reason is why i think that mikey was able to take him down so quickly and so effortlessly is obviously because mikey is insane and he's definitely the strongest person in the entire story but just for the fact that it also taken so much damage throughout the night even takamichi had managed to drop him down to one knee which is extremely impressive after all the like batterings that he'd taken so uh, i just think he's an insanely strong character like he's the the sole person they're trying to fight throughout the entirety of one arc almost so it's like four guys on one and he still comes out on top for a majority of it he's an insanely strong person and i wouldn't like ever want to put any of the other toman guys in a 1v1 up against him uh, next we have kanji one of the executives of the tenjiku gang so i don't really know too much about kanji so i'm gonna stick him in b tier because he gets like beaten quite quickly from memory so i'm gonna stick him just below rindo who probably lasted slightly longer than he did in the fight and moving into you know kind of more of the unknown-esque type characters that we really don't know too much about at the moment who honestly the majority of these people here are all going to be s tier so if you're wondering you know like what i think of of tirano obviously i think tirano could probably beat anyone that we've seen so far throughout the story up until this point as the strongest person that i've got there at the moment kikucho is underneath him and i feel like tirano would have actually had to beat kikucho in a fight to be able to get him underneath him so that would just kind of make sense that he's stronger than him in that kind of way i'm not going to put him in god tier because we don't know how strong he is technically and the only reason he's on you know obviously he's in god tier is because he was insanely strong and the fact that he's passed away just like shinichiro sano Next up though, we have Wakasa and Benkei. So not much is known about both Wakasa and Benkei. Hopefully, you know, like this week with where I'm currently up to, we may get a little bit more revealed to us of these two guys and how strong they are at fighting exactly, but it's all up in the air and unknown completely at the moment. So I'm gonna stick them kind of just above 
Taiju at the moment because they are, I think they're about eight years older than Taiju. Now, when it comes to Akashi here, Akashi's so hard to actually gauge on how strong he is as he's called the God of War. So you would assume him to be this insanely strong character who could go up against five people and win. And we have seen him be able to like, obviously run through a bunch of fodder and take them out. But at the moment, like it's a 3v1 of Kashi, Ben K and Wakasa versus South. So like those three having to beat one leader, in my eyes, it kind of goes to show that Akashi is more of this leader and he's has been given the connotation God of War because he knows how to plan everything out like ahead of time and make sure everything's set up in an exact way that he would like it to be set up. And that's why I believe he's called the God of War. So I'm thinking that he's much like Hisaki in terms of actual strength but probably because he's eight or nine years older, it's it's safe enough to say that he's going to be stronger than a majority of the people who are actually here. So I think sticking him at the top of A tier at the moment wouldn't actually be that bad of a shout. Mm, the man himself, the GOAT, the one and only Draken. Honestly, I don't even think I need to say anything. The same conditions that apply to the other two sadly now apply to Draken. He was an absolute goat and will be remembered as an absolute goat sorry to spoil anyone who has been watching this video up until now and doesn't know about what happened to draken if you want to know more go and watch my video on his entire demise as it is honestly the saddest death throughout the entire story so far and he is a god tier of strength in my eyes takamichi damn so takamichi this is kind of hard to find a spot like where to stick takamichi exactly because he's obviously stronger than Kisaki in like terms of fighting statistics and abilities, but he's nowhere near like stronger than the majority of the people that I've already got an A tier, or I would assume he's not. He's always having to get helped out by like the people who are in A or S tier in his fights. So I think sticking Takamichi just above Kanji in B tier wouldn't actually be a bad spot for him, as he's stronger than Kisaki there, and it kind of just goes to show that like yeah Takamichi wouldn't really be able to beat the people above him in a fight per se none of them would probably actually be able to beat Takamichi though as at the end of the day someone is just going to show up for Takamichi and save his ass and he won't he won't lose until that person ends up showing up because that's just Takamichi's gimmick he never seems to back down and no matter how many times he gets beat into a pulp it never seems to you know change his determination anymore and now moving on, we have Senju. Now Senju is an extremely mysterious new character that we don't really know too much about. The leader of Brahmin, you know, the first female leader of a gang that we've seen. So obviously one of the only other females in all of the Tokyo Avengers stories so far. And honestly, I'm going to have to stick her in S tier just below Tirano because I'm not sure on her fighting strength just yet she says that she's able to take down like so and so or be able to fight this many people by herself but is she actually because we don't really know definitively like whether or not she actually can we've never seen her win a fight against anyone yet it's all just off her words so i really want to see more and kind of see like how strong she actually is in these up and coming chapters hopefully she doesn't get shot or die um, or anything like that too quickly lastly but not least finally the man the myth the man himself mikey and obviously i'm gonna have to stick mikey right at the top of s tier because mikey is the strongest by far and at the moment bar maybe Toronto or senju i think mikey could easily beat anyone on this entire list so i just need to move Baji up to the top real quick because Obviously, Baji's a god for the fact that he's passed on now as well. So I, I, sh I should have remembered that early on. But I think this here pretty much cements on like my thoughts on who I think the strongest characters are from the entire story and who I believe, you know, like the weakest ca characters are in the entire story. And it would kind of make sense in terms of, you know, like people in A tier all being able to defeat people in B tier and then the people in B tier being able to defeat the people in C, so on and so on. Uh, obviously the people in F if they fought the uh, unknowns here that would be a bit of a beat down and be kind of just completely sad but I don't think we'll ever see that happen any day luckily so we can move on from that but yeah obviously we got the four gods at the top and then Mikey is the definitive obviously the strongest person in all of Tokyo Avengers or at least that's what I think 
in terms of power he's definitely stronger than anyone that we've seen so far and i don't think we've actually even seen you know the true limits to his power yet or how strong he could possibly be but anyway what do you guys think of my uh power scaling tier list i guess you could say be sure to let me know down in the comment section below and if you want me to do like more videos like this on more tier lists and all that kind of stuff in the future then also let me know down in the comment section below and possibly i can do a whole bunch of like different collaborations with a whole bunch of like different creators and we can go over and do a bunch of different tier lists relating to you know different tokyo avengers characters or like specific arcs and all that kind of jazz be sure to let me know down below like i've just said twice already but yeah anyway guys if you are new around here and want to keep up to date with the latest tokyo avengers reviews spoilers and just like other anime content in general then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also be sure to leave a like on the video as it really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people but anyway enough of that for now it's been your professional degenerate diavolo and i'll see you all in a bit bye